If you want to be good at Houdini, you need to work smart, you need to work hard, and you need to be consistent. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to work smart. What's the best way to learn Houdini? To get us started, let's break down the things that need to happen if you're to, let's say, learn Houdini and try to get a job based on those skills. Yes, yes, very nice, good. The first thing you need to do is start with a good foundation. A lot of people want to jump the gun, find the coolest looking thing possible and start there, but that's going to be a major mistake. And the reason why that's a mistake is because really cool CG often is difficult. Shocker, I know. <laughs> uh, but with that comes the fact that you don't want to get in over your head at first. You don't want to pick a fight you can't handle yet. I'm going to go pick a fight. So it's better to start with a good foundation. And you can find a good foundation, obviously, with Houdini for the New Artist, which is my intro course. But I'd also recommend watching other intro courses on top of that and checking out the side effects learning material. If you watch other courses and you combine that with what side effects is done, plus you do Houdini for the New Artist, just do it all. It doesn't take you that much time. That's going to give you a great foundation that provides context to everything else you do in the future. So again, I just would really emphasize here that you need to start with your vegetables before you move on to the steak. <laughs> uh, maybe that's a good way of thinking about it here. You need to start with some stuff that isn't flashy, is maybe a little bit boring, uh, but is also really important so that you know what you're working with going into the future. Okay, so there's that. What else needs to happen? Well, you need to build your repertoire of notes. And for those of you who don't speak English very well, that means you need to learn many different nodes and what they do. Let me scare you with something real quick, okay? Here I'm in SOPS, right? If you press tab and then spacebar, in SOPS alone, these are all the nodes <laughs> that you can use for doing things within SOPS. And this actually goes over to my second monitor and it fills up that entire screen as well. What? Why? Why? So no doubt that's overwhelming, but what that says is that you need to start chipping away at these nodes over time. This isn't going to be the only way you learn Houdini. I think people make a mistake with that. But this is going to be something that you need to develop over time. You need to have some of these notes in the back of your head so that when problems show up, you can remember what kind of note you researched before, draw it up to memory, and then use it with your situation. Uh, now, another thing as well that will help you cut through the noise is the Node Bible. With the Node Bible, I've collected some of the most important nodes to know about. These are the nodes that show up time and time again with all kinds of different situations. So here we have nodes on modeling, we have particles, general SOPs, all kinds of things. And each one of these nodes demonstrates what every single parameter does, plus I give you a demonstration on when you might want to use this. Plus, this is great because it goes beyond the user docs and it gives you a easier to understand version of what these things are designed to do. So again, that's a pretty big deal as you're studying. You want to have these notes in the back of your head so that you can use them in all kinds of different situations. Along with that, you want to watch quick tips and browse the user docs as well as the example files in those user docs. So ideally, as you're trying to build up this encyclopedia of nodes in your head, over time, you're watching quick tips and you're also checking out example files provided by side effects so that you remember what these things do. So that should be part of your regimen as you're studying. Here's another thing that you need to do. You want to follow project based courses. Okay, and that's different than looking up notes because project based courses will tell you why you're trying to learn certain things. 
This includes things you find at CG Forge. It also includes other courses and tutorials that let's say go beyond 20 minutes, okay? If something goes beyond 20 minutes and the goal is to have a direct result at the end, then I consider that to be a project-based course, okay? And so you wanna find these longer format projects that other people do. And with that, you also want to watch a few minutes and then try doing it yourself on the side. So I'll say that one more time. You want to watch the video for a few minutes for a project-based course, let's say 10 minutes or so, put it on pause, and then go to your scene file and try to recreate that last 10 minutes by yourself without looking at the tutorial. What a lot of people do is they work in Houdini at the same time as they're watching something else and they're just playing copycat. If somebody makes a node, they make a node. If somebody changes a parameter, they change a parameter. And that's a very bad way of doing things because you're not training yourself to think for yourself. Mm, think, think, think. Mm. think, think, think. Put it like this. If you were to learn how to drive a car, it would be much better to watch somebody driving for 10 minutes and then you take the wheel for 10 minutes and practice driving. It would be much worse if you watch somebody drive for 30 seconds and then you drive for 30 seconds and then they drive th for 30 seconds. That wouldn't work as well. You need to grab onto that wheel for a substantial amount of time so that you can be thinking for yourself, so that you could be driving the car and getting in that mindset of doing things on your own. That's where you want to be as you're starting out. Along with that, you want to research things if you don't understand something. And you don't want to research things for like hours on end without moving on. So maybe give yourself like a 30 minute time limit on researching something when you don't get it. But when you research stuff, ask questions, look up the docs, Google stuff, do whatever you can do to try to figure out this issue yourself. And that's going to help you learn Houdini quite a bit as well. Uh, this again goes back to the idea that you're trying to drive a car. You're trying to learn how to drive for the first time. And in order to do that, you need to take responsibility for what's happening. I take full responsibility. And while we're on the topic of motivation, you want to gather inspiration every single day. A lot of people, they don't like going to art station or they don't like looking at other people's works because it makes them jealous or it affects their ego. It makes them feel bad about where they're currently at as an artist. And that's a major, major mistake. You don't want to have that attitude. Instead, it's much better to look at other people's artwork and appreciate it and enjoy what they're doing so that you can use it as inspiration for yourself going into the future. Is it awesome? It's pretty awesome. Uh, this is a problem that I think not a lot of people realize they have, but if you're not constantly looking up inspiration, you're not constantly trying to uh, appreciate what others are doing, then you may, without even realizing it, uh, be lacking inspiration for yourself. Along with your personal goals, I would say start personal projects and have a personal project on the side at the same time as going through a project-based course. So in other words, you want to have a project-based course that you are following and you want to have something that you do just outside of any tutorial happening at the same time over here. What you'll find is that the stuff you learn in the courses that you follow can be used in your own personal projects. And that's really awesome. Now I know some of you watching are probably telling yourself, all right, yeah, I get it, Tyler. You wanna follow project-based tutorials, but isn't that a problem if you're trying to make a demo reel? Won't studios look down on me if I'm trying to copy what somebody else is doing? And the answer is, it depends. If you follow a project-based tutorial, and you copy it exactly how it was done and you don't change anything, then yes, studios, supervisors, they're going to look down on you because it shows that either A, you didn't care to take it further, B, 
that you don't know how to think for yourself or C, you don't have any creativity and you're not inspired by stuff. And so that is a problem if you follow something exactly. But if you follow a project-based course and you do something a little bit different or you try to take this and you put it in a personal project, you start spinning off of that a little bit. That is totally cool. It is totally acceptable and you should not shy away from doing that, okay? So that means you can add additional effects elements. You can layer on additional things that weren't part of the original course. You can change the lighting, you can change the shading, change the model, change the environment. There are basic things you can do to make your stuff look different, even just by a little bit, from a tutorial that you watched. And yes, it goes a very long way. Even if you just change out some simple things, it shows that you care, it shows that you're inspired by things, and that you want to take things further. Yes, I love technology. So that is why I say you should have a personal project over here where you're just thinking for yourself and a project over here that is a course-based project tutorial and you want to try to combine the two worlds when you're making pieces for a demo reel. Another important thing to do is to seek out professional feedback. Try to find somebody who's gone ahead of you, somebody whose work you respect, somebody who ideally has some experience in the industry and can best guide you on important decisions. What I sometimes find is that people will source these questions out publicly to Facebook or Reddit or Discord, and they don't do anything else but just trust random strangers online with what to do with these life-altering decisions. <laughs> and so when I put it out there like that, it sounds kind of stupid, right? Uh, well, it's because it is. You don't want to just trust random people with important decisions. I feel like the car could drive itself. I bet it could. Start her up. Let's start this car up. Yeah, boy. All right, so drive. <laughs> Along those lines, there's nothing worse than a cocky junior. Somebody who is egotistical, not humble, and doesn't want the opinions of those who are ahead of him or her. The thing is, is that you have to be humble. I argue humble all the time throughout your career, but especially when you first start out, because your ego will ruin everything for you. It'll make you come off the wrong way towards other people, and it also blocks you from growing and improving yourself. So be humble and try to find yourself a person or a mentor that you can work with. Let me also give you some street smarts here. This is an awesome way to network and manifest professional opportunities in the real world. So how does this story play out? Well, if you find a professional mentor of some kind and you're doing great work, and they do professional things because they're professionals, guess what? In the future, when somebody needs to find an effects artist or they have a friend of theirs who needs to hire somebody, you're somebody they know who might come to mind. And that, by the way, is how most people get jobs in the industry. Yes, you can try cold calling. Yes, you can try being like everyone else and sending in your resume and just trying to play the game as it's supposed to be. But in reality, this is a business that's all about relationships. And starting a positive relationship with a mentor will absolutely make a huge difference in your professional success. And this naturally leads us to researching studios and various career topics. So try to find local studios where you live 
And along with that, you want to keep up to date with industry news because as you keep track of the industry news, that will show you opportunities in the future. If a studio is doing well at something, they're probably going to expand their employment opportunities going into the future. So you want to keep a pulse on who's doing well, who's not doing well, what are the various studio cultures, if you can get insight on that. And it takes consistent effort and work to keep a pulse on what's going on. And then last but not least, you want to engage the community on a regular basis. Some people think that, well, they're not going to network until their work looks good enough. Or I'm not going to worry about networking until I have a demo reel or whatever that might be. But I think that's a mistake because to see the benefits of networking, you need to be networking for a long time. You need to be consistently showing up. You need to be investing in the community over time if you want to see the benefits of that. And so that means you need to start now. There's nothing wrong with being green. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being new at Houdini. All of us were new at some points, okay? And really the only thing that matters is that you want to improve and you want to help other people in their professional projects going into the future. So as long as you show up with that attitude, then nobody can really say anything negative about what you're doing. I mean, not really, because all you're trying to do is be part of what's going on and help everyone else achieve their goals as well as your own, which is a very respectable thing to do. Respect. Respect the plight. So here's what all of this boils down to. If you want a good regimen, then this is it. If you have one hour of time, check out the Node Bible or the user docs for about 15 minutes. Watch a course, go back and forth for 10 minutes on doing something in the course, doing something on your own in Houdini for 10 minutes. And then combine that with whatever you want to do. So if you only have one hour, you want to sneak in the day to learn Houdini, or let's say after work, you want to chip away at this over time, that is a good regimen to have. If you have something more like an afternoon or a morning to dedicate towards studying Houdini, then the three hour regimen is going to be great for that. You start off with 15 minutes per node for a total of 45 minutes. And instead of tackling one node Bible entry or user doc example, uh, you tackle three of them. So you do three, you watch the course again, going back and forth, do that three times for an hour, work on a personal project for an hour, and then engage with the community and be active in some kind of way. So that could be posting on social media. It could be gathering inspiration or reference. I also have the weekly wrangle videos. So you can go here to CG Forge and I have all kinds of different career topics to check out here as well. And then lastly, if you have a whole day to dedicate towards Houdini, a full eight hour day, then I'd recommend doing three node Bible entries, watch a course and do it for about three hours. Take a break, eat, recharge, try to move around a bit, get some exercise that really helps you study as well. And then work on your own personal projects in the afternoon. So you're in there, you're not watching tutorials anymore. You're just trying things out in Houdini and having fun for another three hours. So you do that. And then again, at the very end, you engage the community a little bit every single day as well. And so if you have a whole day to dedicate towards learning Houdini, that would be something I generally recommend. But the most important part is that you find a system that works for you. You write down something, uh, it could be a regimen just like that, which is customized for your life and your situation. And of course, if you need help with that, that would be a perfect thing to schedule a consultation for. And we could talk about more specifically what you need to learn or what to do when organizing your time. One last thing I would add to that is to keep an eye on the community events that are happening around you and try to attend those as much as possible. So again, if you have a VR meetup, if you have a Houdini meetup near you, even if you have other artists in other softwares that are in your community, try to make an effort to go out there, meet people, make connections in the real world, because that goes a very long way over time. So there you have it. That is how I would suggest learning Houdini and also more importantly, reaching your goals in general. 
Now, to get more specific advice, you'll need to go through a consultation because we need to talk and we need to actually figure out specifically what you need to be doing. But as a general rule of thumb, as a general strategy, this is what I suggest to everyone for learning Houdini. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.